Hey everybody, this is Pastor Scott from Dallas Baptist Church. I want to give you a sermon preview for July 19th, 2020. The title of the sermon is Somebody's Watching Me. The text will be Psalm 139, 1 through 16. You know, we live in an age of mass surveillance where companies are watching us, governments are watching us, hackers are watching us, and others are watching us. And there's a lot of people with paranoia and discomfort over the issue. Uh, you know, I've got one of these uh, Alexa Echo Dot, Amazon Echo Dots and stuff, and I went to the house, and my wife keeps the microphone turned off because she's afraid of what Amazon's hearing her say, and I'm a little afraid too, so I keep mine off sometimes. And and uh, you know, I saw a thing this week where people are a little paranoid over the coin shortage. In fact, one person put on Facebook. In fact, I saw two people share this thing a person put on there that um, the coin shortage is a way for the government to track us or credit card transactions. So me, I got on my high horse, my little soapbox, and I responded saying, you know what, you probably posted this on Facebook, which you did. And Facebook tracks you, everything you do, pretty much, and they they uh, look at your habits and they sell, they put, post ads and sell ad data uh, to market to you based off of your habits. Uh, they use probably a smartphone to post that. And the smartphone companies, like especially Google, and, and I'm sure Apple does too, the major companies, they track you on what you do and your habits as well. And, uh, you know, anytime you use a credit card, debit card, you may be tracked by the credit card companies. You know, all this different stuff. And we live in a world where it's it's a little paranoid. In fact, I'm going to put a meme in here in just a minute. There are a few memes I found on Facebook. Uh, one of them is, uh, my wife asked me uh, why I carry a gun in the house. I looked at her dead in the eye and said, government spying. She laughed. I laughed. Amazon Echo laughed. I shot the Echo. It was a good time. And another one says, people in the 60s, uh, I better not... Uh, say what the government or excuse me i better not say or the government will wiretap my house people today wiretap do you have a recipe for pancakes i mean so you know we're a little we're a little crazy these days but um i mean in fact uh, a few years ago the number one seller for penguin random house was george orwell's 1984 book which is about a dystopian future where the ruling party controls the news or propaganda and it's omnipresent in its surveillance uh, from 1984, we get the pop culture notion of Big Brother is watching you. And we we'll often hear that sometimes. In fact, uh, there's constant surveillance you know, in our society. Recently, the Chinese government used facial res- recognition software and extreme listening devices to con- uh, attempt to control the Uyghur population in Western provinces. In fact, they've got most concentration like camps for these Uyghur people in Western China. In 2013, the, the, the British Telegraph reported that there were surveillance cameras on on every 11 people in Great Britain. Our your smartphones, there's always devices watching us, listening to us, knowing what we're doing. Google and Amazon push your smart listening devices, uh, you know, every year it seems like. And I've got one of those little Echoes, Dots. I've got Echo at the house. In fact, in 2015, there was a murder trial where the, uh, the device was listening in a home and that recording device was used as uh, evidence in the trial, the, the recording from that that uh, device, the Echo Dot, I think it was Echo, anyway. Uh, in fact, uh, one day I was uh, talking about Happy Meals uh, to somebody, and I'll be dead gum if it didn't pop up uh, an ad for McDonald's on my phone uh, on one of my social media outlets. I, I don't know how that's done, but we're being watched. You see, not only does the government watch us, not only do, do major companies watch us, uh, sometimes nosy neighbors watch us, but God watches us. God knows. God knows more than Google does. God knows more than Amazon and their devices do. God knows more than Big Brother government does. God knows. God is omniscient. God is omnipresent. And God is omnipotent. And that should scare the quote-unquote hell out of us, the evil out of us. But we should also find comfort and solace in the fact that God uh, watches us and He knows. The passage, uh, Psalm 139, I divide up in three parts, essentially, um, well, in some ways four, but the uh, fact he's omniscient uh, is verses one through six. Uh, it relates to God's omniscience. Uh, God knows everything. God omni- God's omnipresence, the fact that God's everywhere, uh, is kind of alluded to in uh, verses seven through 12. And the fact that God is an omnipotent creator uh, is... is, is a powerful creator is alluded to in verses uh, 13 and through 18 especially. Um, but we talk about this passage, uh, and God, God's, God knows everything. God is omniscient. In fact, the psalm begins, You search me, Lord. You know me. You know where I, when I sit down, when I rise. 
Uh, you perceive my thoughts from afar. God knows everything. In fact, one time when I preached this passage before, I got up for the congregation with a tinfoil hat on my head. Uh, you know, kind of like those conspiracy theorist people, you know, that believe the aliens or the government's reading their thoughts. They put aluminum foil on their head. But God knows. God knows everything. And in fact, that verb to know occurs six times in this psalm. A cognate knowledge is once in this psalm. And, uh, these seven or more instances, uh, you find uh, notions of searching, discerning, uh, quaint, behold. In fact, knowing and searching are in the bookends of the psalm, Psalm 1 and Psalm 24. So this is really about God knows. Nothing is hidden from Him. He hears every word. God knows my sins. God knows what I've done in the dark. He knows all the hateful words I've said and unsaid. He knows all my pet sins. And all the things that go in on in the dark, God knows. Jeremiah 17, 9 um, reminds us that we're, you know, we're a little dark. In fact, uh, Romans 3, 23 reminds us all the sin and fall short of glory of God. Paul speaks of a fleshly nature, an inclination to sin. God knows my struggles, my nature. He knows how miserably I give in and how massively I fail. But he loves us still. He loves me still. Just, even though he knows me, he still loves me. Verses 7 through 13 again point to God's omnipresence. God, the fact that God's everywhere. Omnipresence can be defined as uh, God being present everywhere in creation at the same time. Omnipresence uh, more correctly suggests that all things are present to God in some ways. But uh, verse uh, 7 begins, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? You know, If I go up to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. God knows. If I say, Surely the darkness will hide me, and the light will become night around me, even darkness will not be too dark to you. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. You see, there's nowhere that we can hide from God. Not even in heaven above or the, the death below, the grave below. God knows where we are. God is there. Uh, darkness can maybe, mention this passage, maybe can denote, can denote maybe uncertainty and fear. God is even there when we're afraid. From the beginning of life to beyond the end of life, God is there. Uh, in all my ways, in fact, the word ways is mentioned twice in this passage. Everywhere I go, God is there. He's there in times of comfort, in times of sustainability. He's also there in times of fear and uncertainty. I can't get away from God even if I tried. Thank God that he's there for me, even when I don't think I need him. Another thing pointed to in this passage is God's omnipotence, especially verses uh, 13 through 16, and one could argue through 18 as well. But omnipotence, it's, you know, like those other terms I mentioned, omniscience and omnipresence that come from the Latin, omnipotence means all-powerful. Uh, one def definition is the attribute that refers to God's ability to do whatever is consistent with God's own character and being in affecting his divine plan for creation. Uh, God's omnipotence is primarily demonstrated in God's overturning evil for good, especially evident in the death of Jesus, which although um, was a malicious act of people, has become God's means of human salvation. That's from a pocket dictionary of theology. Uh, but the, I mean, verse 13 begins out talking about uh, uh, even in the womb, God created us. He knitted us, formed us together in a womb. Um, it says, it goes on to say, I praise you because I'm fearful. God created us. I mean, think about even the scientific aspect of this. Um, cells uh, come together, uh, you know, uh, cells from the male, cells from the female come together to form uh, the embryo, to form life. That's God working. God does this. God is all-powerful. He knits us together. Uh, in fact, the uh, we're intricately woven a sense of fearfully here in verse 14 is a no notion that we should be in awe of God, how powerful he is and all that he does. He knows me best because he created me. He has transcended all knowing and everywhere. He is almighty God. Thank him for that. 
You see, God knows all my sins. God knows all the dirt. He could do all kind of crazy things with that if he wanted to. He could even send me to hell. But praise be to God. He loves us despite who we are. He's an all-powerful God who cares for us. He is a personal God who knows every aspect of me and loves me in spite of it. 